So that's that. And I know he's just as bad as his last one. So, and you tell your family, baby girls from life. Baby girls from life. You, you got your Garcia, you, you got your Garcia glasses on, so that makes you a baby girl. So run up here and give, give your baby boy a hug. Still here. 
six months. I was running around trying to get somebody to take my picture in Bergman's catalog and like that kind of stuff. But the favorite place to travel, uh, I'll tell you a special trip before my mom passed. Uh, when I was a kid, when I was born, I was born in Oakland, which is here in the United States over by San Francisco. But I moved out of the country when I was six months old, and I didn't move back until I was six and a half years old. And my the first place that I lived was a, a country club, a place called Denmark. And, and they speak a different language, it's called Danish. And so my first language was Danish until I was about five years old. Um, and so me and my mom lived there for three years. And then before my mom went to heaven, the last trip that I took her on, because she always wanted to go, we went back to Denmark. And we found the same house that we lived in when I was six months or three years old. So that will always be a special place and a special destination and a special memory. So my favorite place that I've traveled is Denmark. It's a super physical 
show, we talk all the time that uh, the most challenging part of SWAT is the physicality that we go through on a daily basis. So we have the gear on, which is a little lighter than the real gear, but when you have it on for 10, 12 hours, take after take, and you're doing chase scenes and, and car crashes and explosions and hand-to-hand -hand combat, it wears on you. So we, we joke all the time, we'll keep, we'll keep doing SWAT as long as our knees hold up. And so, you know, we're always, we always got some bumps and bruises. So preparing for the SWAT happens a lot of outside of SWAT, and that's just taking care of your body, making sure you work out, making sure you get your sleep, making sure you get your PT, right, Shan? Get, get your massages, you know, just take care of your body because it's just, it's such a physical show. Yeah, we have a, a technical advisor that will keep us on point. And there was one time a few years ago, we were going up these stairs, And he's like, come on, let's go, you're going to keep it tight, keep it tight. And I was like, oh, you, when you were like, when you would breach your house and go up those stairs, how many times did you do it? Once. <laughs> so 15, hey, I could just get there, but we're tired. But no, we have the glasses. You know, we joke about it, but it's, it's kind of a fun show. I don't know much to have that. And different than any other show I've ever done. She wanted to see an example of that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Television, but 
that platform, and I feel like I have a responsibility as a black man. So they, they went for not a title, but they addressed it. You know what I mean? And so we talked about Black Lives Matter. But, other, but and, and, and I thought it was well done. I, I wish I wish it had been even more intense. But uh, the fact that we at least talked about it. Uh, uh, but also we've done stories about human trafficking. Uh, one of my favorites, one of my favorites that hit the hardest uh, is something that this country is dealing with uh, on school shootings. And so we, we, we dealt with school shootings, we also dealt with suicide by cop. Uh, so, you know, we can't be, we can't be that heavy, sure. that, that on it all the time because people, you know, tune into the TV shows to be entertained. You know, they hit over the head, but I don't feel like we did it hit over the head. I think we did it gracefully. Uh, to where it woke people up and paying attention to show that we were paying attention. So I love that we can entertain people, but I, I love that we're not afraid to take on uh, big issues that are affecting Yeah, the yeah. episode we did, it was called Stigma, just the Stigma of Mental Health and how so many police officers and, you know, service members deal with it, um, and first responders, and they, it's just that you don't want to talk about stuff. And my character is specifically very, uh, you know, old school Catholic, yeah, I'll talk to my groups. It was a really well done episode dealing with how do you process this thing that you see day to day that you went through in real life. It's, it's really heavy stuff. And, and to just put it on television so that people kind of think, you know what, yeah, there's no nothing wrong with talking about your, your issues that you have. So I, I think that was a, a good one for us that, that really started the conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to build on that before we wrap up and just say that, um, y'all, I'm trying so hard to keep my shit together. Not, you are yours. I love you. And I think one of the reasons um, for me was watching the president and how my, my sister is here. Her and say hi. Um, we have rare disease in our family. It's something we, you know, are passionate about. We've got our own profit for it. And with the resident, how you guys showed. I mean, there's lots of cystic fibrosis, there was cerebral palsy, there was real conditions, and um, even actors portraying that who had their own. And so I did want to just selfishly ask my question saying, like, how much of that process um, of working on the resident were you working with, like, your, your like, I don't know if you guys have about, like, the consultants that you have, the producers, and how much you actually had to learn about these medical conditions that you were spinning lines up about. Yeah, thank you for that question. Um, you know, I did the show because um, it's a medical show, residents, and I did it because um, I had a mentor who passed away about two years before I did the show. I had a friend of mine whose mother passed away from a medical error, which we've talked about in that show before, so there were really personal reasons medically that I wanted to do it, and also because you know, health and wellness just interconnects us all. I mentioned this if, if, we, if we were in the, um, the meet and greets together, but health and wellness uh, interconnects us all in terms of you may have loved ones who passed away, I've had loved ones who passed away, and um, so I felt like it could, could connect everyone. In, in order to uh, play the characters that we play, yeah, I had to, um, we had medical advisors on the show and uh, they get notes every single script, and, and so you can say the words, but if you want to really try to connect to the character, connect to the audience, then you have to know what you're saying. And so for me, that took a, a lot of time, a lot of research, whether it was something about uh, the brain or the heart or the lungs or whatever that was that was coming into the hospital in that particular show. Um, there's a lot of research, but I love that process with a medical advisor just giving me the notes and the images and the videos, and um, it was enriching for me, and I love that process, although it was incredibly difficult, but I do hope that that's a piece of the show that if people have watched it that they've enjoyed, where you feel like that interconnection in terms of we're only here for a very short amount of time, and so the things that we can do in our lives, or that you want to do in your life, you know, do those things, the people that you love, tell the people that you love, and you know, as actors, we get a chance to 
entertain or to make you think about something or feel something. And with that particular show, I hope it's something to say, hey, life is, is really precious. We're here for a very short time, so let's embrace it and try and be present with the moment and tell each other that we care about each other. And that's the reason why I wanted to do that show, because I had uh, lost some people really close to me. Thank you, and I think, yeah, I think building on that, it's with the resident, with Good Trouble, with SWAT, with honestly, it was always a partner playlist. There were a lot of issues that were tackled that I think gave people a lot of representation and what people have seen. And I know it's a time to watch all your shows. I was a fan drumming backstage with one of you guys. I think it's, it really does mean so much to everyone. So I want to, everybody, I want to, Send out some love and give them a round of applause for providing us with a great Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. Thank you, you guys, for y'all. Imagine, I'm in Sydney here. I love you guys so much. It's an honor just as an actor and as a fan of myself to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you guys. Thank you.